Do you want to learn how to crush your enemy's soul with the corn lord of skulls on the tabletop? Allow me on Ops 23 to give you some tactical advice on how to position, get some good shooting angles, how to stay away from shooting angles, and hold objectives. And we're going to do this for the first time ever on Onslaught Gaming 40K, TTS. Yes, we're going to use TTS today to break down some of the tactics of how I use my KLOS. Stay tuned. back everyone so here's tts for the first time on onslaught gaming 40k so i really wanted to break this down to you so you can visually see how i use the corn lord of skull on the tabletop right so you see how i already have them in the deployment zone and i'm not going to go ahead and bother and put the rest of my army here because i want this to be clear to you all okay usually i would put some exalted eight bound here probably behind here and ground right here in the middle so he wouldn't get shot through all this little slit on this terrain piece, right? So jackals probably over here making sure they can run and hold this objective, screen and move to try to hold this objective. So you kind of want to have the corn lord of skulls out of line of sight so you can't get pegged from this direction over here, all right? Because there could be some very mobile and fast units that'll try to get an angle to you over here but you want to make sure you're behind that line as you can see right here from this terrain piece we are behind that line they're going to have to come over here somewhere to potentially get a line of sight to you but between this four by six here and this ruin right here they're really not going to be able to shoot you turn one all right but usually the best thing to do at the beginning of the game is to tell your opponent hey i'm playing by intent so if you happen to have a line of sight to the KOLOS over here, right? Allow me to adjust a little bit. Most people will allow you to adjust it, all right? Just play by intent. But as you can see, right, there's really no line of sight here. They're really not going to get any line of sight coming through this 4 by 6 in this room, all right? So this is how you want to start off in your deployment zone. You want to maximize his movement because his movement is only 8 obviously if you get plus two movement you go up to 10 but you're gonna have to obviously come out of your deployment zone right about four inches and then you're gonna have to go straight forward to probably position him around right here or right here if you can get him out there depending really what you're going against okay it can be a multitude of different things, but you really want to position them either right here or right there. And that's the first one for how to deploy in your deployment zone. All right, so moving on from deploying out of your deployment zone, right? So we're in this position right here, as we were talking about before. You're probably really not going to make that position right there, but you want to move from here. All right. So. You want to position yourself right here to try to get in here, right? So you can have a line of sight to anything that might be on the other end. Obviously, you can't go on top of this piece. Models may not be pl placed on the bottom level of the terrain piece, right? So you can't be on top of this. But you want to position them in a place where he can get line of sight to everything that's coming down this pipeline on your first one, depending on what you're really going against, right? If you're going against things that are very deadly, it can pop him in one turn. You really don't want to do that. You don't want to position yourself there. You really want to just threaten people by positioning him right here. 
you might want to right move it a little bit remember you pay one pivot movement and then two inches and then you can go flat here if you want you can go a little bit further here just so they don't get line of sight from this angle on this side but you should be good in this position they're really not going to get an angle to you unless they come out here if they're coming out here you should have eight bound right around here so they're sacrificing that unit and usually units that move that fast and want to come out that fast and are that deadly are pretty pricey units so they're they're kind of putting themselves in a situation um they can be advantageous for you right obviously this model is 450 points anything that's going to be shooting you is probably going to be significantly less because you know the dubs likes to keep us at 450 points but that's a discussion for another day i really think that he should be dropped to about 400 points but it is what it is for the time being i think he's still super amazing as long as you're very methodical learn how to position as we're doing right now right put them in the proper locations i showed you how to do them in the deployment zone i'm showing you now how to position them behind these walls so you can get some proper angles out and more so to position him. So if things start coming out to want to hold this objective, right? You're going to be within 18 inches from here to the Corn Lord of Skulls, right? And then you're really going to have that angle to shoot anything over here as well. Because you also have the, you have the Skull Hurler and you have the Demon Gore Cannon, right? So you're going to have a 60 inch range weapon that's going to be able to poke out and shoot anything on this side right here and just about destroyed just about anything right unless it's a land raider but i highly doubt that anybody's just going to put a land raider right here knowing that there's a corn lord of skulls they could just pop out if you get first turn right just pop out jump right here get an angle to it and just destroy it turn one highly doubt it possible but i highly doubt it right people who are on a higher competitive level want to make sure that they position and deploy their armies properly as well all right so most of the time right this will be first turn i'll position the klos right here if anything starts threatening i'll just start pop shotting it if not if they stay back then i'll probably move up a little bit right here okay just to try to get any angles off first Obviously, you cannot overwatch, so then you, you won't have that ability, right? But it really depends. It really depends when you're going up against. If, if you're going up against some Exocrines or some Riptides or some Last Cannons on a Lancer or a Land Raider, you want to continue to position here until they come out, right? You definitely want to make sure that your Exalted A bound your eight bound are in position to charge those units and kind of move block them from ever coming out over here and threatening your foreign lord of skull right or if you have things that are that are uh situated over here coming out through here and they don't have a lot of anti-vehicle weapons and they have a lot of infantry right position them right here where you can see right you could just see slightly right there with the axe at this tip right here and you can see anything going through here right so you could just shoot through there and get an angle to those and then you're going to have both of the weapons at 18 inches with them right here all right so this is one of the deployment maps that i wanted to show everyone this is tipping point and this is layout seven all right so this is actually a very good layout for world eaters for us to be on you you want to be able to stage and position yourself properly get proper charges you know get into combat as well as you can because we have a lot of screens we have a lot of ruins we have a lot of opportunity to really stage and become one of the most efficient units in close combat on this tabletop especially in a team environment and you get layout seven right with tipping point this is going to be prime real estate for all of you. 
All right, so here's the second map that I've loaded up. This is Layout 6, Pariah Nexus, obviously. Layout 6 and Search and Destroy. <clears throat> and I've already went ahead and deployed the Corn Lord of Skulls. Once again, I'm not going to bother putting on the 8-bound spawns and Angron and everything like that. Because I kind of want to show you, you right on a solo basis how to deploy and position the corn lord of skulls right best position you could put it here but then you're going to be exposed to a lot of things that can just come out of the deployment zone and, and find an angle towards it right right here there is no angle towards it even if it comes throughout here yeah they could potentially come out here and no there's there's no angle here whatsoever right four by six here so nothing's gonna be able to come through here and get an angle on this looking at the direction that it's at all right so there's no angle that you can get at all on this deployment types and this is layout six search and destroy so the best position to put them is right here be behind this large ruin okay yeah it's gonna cost you a little bit more movement to get out but remember you want to save this 450 piece uh pointed model right you don't want to make sure you want to make sure that it survives the entire game or as long as you can for most of the game at least three rounds right you really want to get four battle rounds out of it for 450 points and get some efficiency some shooting kill some units make sure that if you got to bring, bring angron back turn four that he helps bring angron back things like that for killing things uh in battle round three so Keep them around as long as possible. I really like to keep them along the entire ride, all five battle rounds. I don't like to expose it a lot. That's why my Corn Lord of Skull really survives a lot in every single game that I've played. He's actually only been destroyed out of 33, 34 games that I've played in multiple levels, competitive levels, uh, some practice levels as well. I've only been destroyed twice two or three times he's been plinked a little bit a couple wounds on it other than that hasn't really been destroyed at all at a or at a very low percentage when you're looking at it as of 34 games two out of 34 times right so very low percentage of it being destroyed because that's because i'm positioning it well those two obscure right two dis destructions that i've had on them was one of these scenarios where I had the Corn Lord of Skull on an objective marker. Some rubrics came around, right? They shouldn't get any angles here, but if they drop right here, those pesky rubrics, they can just drop anywhere, right? Get an angle, hit you with all of those, uh, those flamers that auto hit. And if you're on an objective marker, they're going to reroll all wounds because they normally reroll wounds of one. But if you're an objective marker, they're going to reroll all wounds. The best thing to do, and they're not going to kill you all in one volley, right? I had a guy that actually ended up hitting me 44 times or had 44 shots the first time. So obviously hit me 44 times because it, it auto hits and ended up wounding me around 24 times. That took off half of the wound, so it, it dropped me down to 12 the only reason it ended up killing it all in one turn is because i decided to move it instead of firing it and leaving it there to shoot at the rubrics i really didn't know it was one of my first games with the corn lord of skulls and one of my first games against thousand suns many moons ago and i really didn't know how efficient those rubric marines are with all of those flamers so i try to move it out of the way thinking that i'm getting it out of danger but i put it in more danger because not only did it be able to double tap me right it gets to it gets to reroll all wounds because i was on the objective marker he wanted to start off while i was on objective marker and overwatch me the second time so the first time was it was just regular shooting when he deep striked and then the second time is overwatch when i decided to move it to get to safety and and away from them so i can get some eight bound and berserkers into them things like that because I know they're a squishy unit of just dust particles, but um, I didn't know. I didn't know that well. But now you know, 
So don't get caught off guard by Rubric Marines with a, I want to say it's an Infernal Master. It attaches to the unit. It gives them a four plus invul as well. All right? Correct me in, in the comment section. I don't know. Um, I'm no uh, Thousand Suns player. Uh, my chaos flavor is obviously corn. So let me know. Regardless, that's one of the dangers. And the second time was in close combat by Keeper of Secrets. So, I mean, it was the toughest things, right? Things that should be destroying me if you make those mistakes. So just to show you real quick how I've already positioned it, but I'm going to go ahead and maneuver it a little bit. All right, so I'm going to move it up into this direction on turn one. And I'm either going to keep it back here, depending how much shooting is going on, just so I can get an angle with the axe, right? Through here, through here, make ensuring that I'm getting a cover save the entire time. Don't worry, nothing over here is really going to shoot you unless they get into, like, this angle right here, around here somewhere, okay? And then they can kind of uh, shoot you through this area. Yes, obviously, if they're a fast army... Or even, not even a fast army. If they just had a land raider that was just sitting back here and it passes over this. Because remember, I can't sit on it. So it's going to have to pass, pass uh, uh, beyond it. Or some harlequins with some star weavers and some haywire. Um, so haywire cannons. So just make sure that when you're moving it, there's obviously not something with this, within this vicinity right here that's just going to destroy it in one shot. Usually I position this stuff where there's no shooting here. If there is, right, then hang tight. Sit back for a little while. Obviously stay out of the ruin, right? Keep your entire model out of the ruin. Sink, sit tight. Sit back. Make sure that you keep it safe. Once things start appearing, you want to make sure you get the first shot, right? Don't allow them to get the first shot. But if there, there is nothing threatening, put it in a position right here where maybe they've moved models into this objective marker and start shooting. Hey, even if you want to, you could start positioning it, right? Right in here. And just about there you should be holding the objective marker if you have a 10 inch move now you're gonna have to pass this obviously right so very in a very very weird situation here because you have that little ruin piece right here but right about there that's really the only place that Be able to get it seems right about there all right or just stay back stay back shoot with the axe clear it next turn and then you're going to clear it right here and then you're going to be able to hold the objective marker and people are going to have to just take you off of it right if if i were you if you're going to hold the objective marker i would sit on the objective marker itself so nobody can be around you Right, they would have to be in an engagement range of you. And then if you're gonna use either your sweep or your strike, you're doing a lot of attacks or a lot of damage with your strike. So you're gonna be highly threatening, especially to an army that doesn't have a lot of shooting. If you're going against right, another world eaters or space marines without a lot of anti-tank, even if they do have inceptors and things like that, like a, a ton of inceptors yeah they're going to be highly threatening they're still going to wound on fives you know they can put the oath of moment on you things like that but most things in the game unless they have some serious guns are not going to take you down immediately and you just want to position yourself properly so this is how i would use this very scarcely uh either back here or just sitting here where I'm just sitting in the back 40. My axe is just picking out a little bit so I can get some angles and then have some eight bound, some other units around here. So they're not really going to be too concerned with this because it's not going to be the biggest threat, right? 
remember you're not just going to have the klos you're going to have eight bound over here you're going to have berserkers and rhinos you're going to have jackals sitting back here maybe another jackal unit here just trying to sticky it trying to bait them in come into your world leader's army because that's exactly what we want we want to hit them in melee and the corn lord of skull is back here just making sure it tanks everything that tries to go within these lines or this objective line. all right and this is the second layout on search and destroy layout six search and destroy and we're going to go ahead and do another one and then i'll show you exactly how to stage and position your corn lotus holes on that all right and the final one i wanted to show you is layout eight and crucible of battle so today i've shown you three of them on tts in the future we're going to go through a lot more i'm going to start using tts a lot more to really show you how to break down tactics and positioning and movement and things like that i think this is very beneficial obviously right a lot of us are very visual some of us are you know auditory where we're, we're listening to things or we can read things right but i'm a visual person myself i actually want to see it and i wanted to show everyone exactly how i do it in game as you can see this is a beautiful table on TTS. I really like this. It's really dark, so you can barely see the Corn Lord of Skulls. And don't you worry. The orientation of this model really doesn't matter. I know you might be thinking to yourself, oh, it looks like it's very corny. It looks very dumb because it's backwards. Who cares, right? What you, all you want to worry about is not getting shot. This is the prime location to getting the most distance out of your models and that's what i've been showing you for every variant of layouts that i've been giving you today all right obviously i could easily hide behind here and hold this objective and things like that but no i want to give you prime real estate so you can get within those 18 inch weapons the skull hurler and then for the demon gore cannon right so you can get the 60 inch uh 60 inches off of that weapon so you want to maximize your shooting, your threat range, while positioning yourself the most efficient way possible, all right? And without getting shot, most importantly, you don't want to get this thing destroyed, like I was telling you in the last layout, right? You do not want the KOLS to get destroyed turn one or turn two or turn three or at all through the entire game, right? You don't want it to get destroyed at all. You want it to survive as long as possible. It's 450 points. You really want it to be around all game long and really threaten your opponent with everything that it does. Because if it sticks around to the end, it's going to be the strongest thing when they're at their weakest and you've basically killed their entire army. Especially if you're helping to get Angron back and you have this, the KLOS and Angron at the end of the game. And maybe you have one unit of Jackals in the back six right holding an objective marker and that's all you have on your tabletop that's fine you should be able to destroy or finish the rest of their army off battle round four battle round five all right so let me go ahead and show you same deal on this one i want to go ahead and show you how to maneuver out of deployment zone so this is deploying then i want to show you how to stage it throughout the game right you want to make sure you get some extra movement on this one. You really want to pre-measure on this layout because this gets really funky in here. You can get into a lot of angles where things could start shooting it through this gap or shooting it through this gap and things like that. And like I always tell you, try to position it away from things that are ultra shooty. So if you have something over here that's ultra shooty, right, then go back position it right or from this position right here okay your two inch pivot go right here try to hold the objective marker at the same time and get an angle to things through here okay staying away from angles of any shooting through this route right here nothing is going to come past this sitting over here okay so anywhere from here 
to back here, they're really not going to come past this. All right, and get a shot or an angle on your corn lord of skulls. If you have something that's threatening right on this end, then you want to position it as far as possible so it can get no angles throughout here. So maybe you want to position it here so it doesn't get an angle through here. But it's really going to have to sit over here in order to get an angle at your ass end. Okay. And then now, right, you position it back a little bit. Your ass end is going to get some angles over here and shoot a unit. It might be peeking out. Or if you can get a little bit further with 10 inches over here, right, and go ahead, if you have to, you know, rotate it, pay that two inches and try to put it here so you don't have that axe hanging out. And then now you have the line of sight to everything over here. So even things that are sitting on this objective marker, you have line of sight, but nothing over here should have line of sight to your back end. And then you should be able to see everything here, even if something is staged right here in your opponent's army. Shoot those things down, right? And let's say the threat continues to be over here. Then you want to take your corn lord of skulls, right? And keep on positioning yourself where you're just, you know, threading the line so it doesn't get any angles in this direction for from you, you know, to you. And you keep having angles over here and then battle round three you come over here and if it's still sitting right let's just lay this model down right here if the enemy is still sitting over here then now you can continue to get some pop pop shots or have your eight bound already attacking it right if it's really sitting right here the entire three battle rounds and you're not charging it with eight bound on this end Right, which eight bound should be in this section right here, then you're really you're really not doing what you need to do with your world leaders. Okay. He should be moving just without in, in any type of impediments whatsoever, right? Nothing should be impeding him to to do what he needs to do and hold this objective potentially and start getting angles over here to shoot everything over here. All right. So let me just try to position him over here a little bit better. There we go. Now you're holding that objective marker. You have an angle through here. You have an angle through his backfield. And you have an angle to anything that's coming over here. Then you can just start pushing. Or continue to sit back. Right? You really don't want to sit on this center objective marker like you did on Search and Destroy. Things like that there are a lot of angles for you to get shot on this one it's it's not to say that you you know don't do it but you really shouldn't do it really depends on the type of armies that you're going against if you're going against blood angels then you might want to right you might want to sit in here and and try to encourage them to try to wound you toughness 13 right most of their stuff are wounding you on sixes, if if not fives, instead, right? Because of their plus one to wound. Um, and then you're going to do a sweep attack back, and you're going to kill most of their best units because they're definitely going to throw their best units in there, right? So you're going to probably do more damage to them than they're going to do to you. I can almost guarantee it. They're not going to kill you on a one volley, right? Unless Blood Angels has something brand new that I don't know about other than their advance and charge. And they're one captain that can be amazing, right? But then that's when you take that precision, you know, hit that captain and kill him outright with damage eight. <laughs> the mark of corn straight up. All right. So this is the three three layouts. I hope you really enjoyed everything I brought to you today, especially on TTS. And just to show everybody, if you wanted to see my list that I'm using currently, right, this is actually what I'm using. So this is two spawn, one Angron, one Lord Invocatus, two units of Jackals with Skull Smasher and the Mauler Blade, of course, one unit of just regular eight bound, one three man unit of Exalted another three-man unit of exalted and one fat 
pack of six exalted and this is currently what's in my list but of course the klos right because if anything i'm probably and i'm trying to continue to be the only world leader player that's continuing to use the klos i hope um that i continue to use them efficiently i get better every time i use them it's a big hunk of rectangular you know it's, it's a big brick it's a rectangular brick that's just sitting on the tabletop all game long so trying to position it maneuver it really makes me a better player as well in the movement phase so that way if you ever try to use the mauler fiend i know some people have been talking before about using like the mauler fiends um things like that they do have a big large oval base so trying to position them maneuver them throughout the tabletop can be a challenge this really helps you out obviously the bigger you go it's like learning how to drive a semi truck when you go to drive a regular truck you're just going to be that much more proficient in things you do no it's not going to be the same but it's going to be very similar and it's going to make it a lot easier for you all right so give me one second i'm gonna do my outro Thank you very much to everyone who participated and watched to the very end. I appreciate you very much. Hopefully, I was able to show you and help you grow a little bit more knowledgeable with using the KLOS on the tabletop and rip out the hearts of all of your enemies on the tabletop in Warhammer 40K. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe as always. It would be very kind if you could leave me a comment. Let me know how you feel about the video, how you feel about me using TTS, and if you want to see it a little bit more in the future. All right? And don't forget, Onslaught Gaming 40K, where victory is just a strategy away. And most importantly, burn, maim, kill, blood for the blood god. Ah!